You know, it's been a while since I've read the book. How old was Cinderella? Cinderella? Cinderella Wasn't she like 18, 20 years old? I bet she was in 72. (laughs) And right now, the glass slipper fits this man. James Hilton with sponsorship from Retirement Living, a small cable network that caters to the Geritol set, if you will. He is going to make the Daytona 500 if he can stay where he is or have only Johnny Sauter pass him. If Michael Walter Boris said Mike Bliss can't get to him, Hilton's in the race. And that right there was the 1966 Nextel Cup Rookie of the Year when a lot of these guys he's racing against right now in this race, they were not even born. That baby's a chariot right now. <laughs> Davis Bain was here then, I think. Uh, I think no, Bergman no, definitely no, was. Not true. <laughs> not true. I was hoping to be able to use that line. I looked it up. I thought he was working the year in 72, the first year I did come here. But majority of the field, that's 41 years ago, majority of the field weren't born then. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing is right now. But look at what we're sitting the stage for right now, Dave. We're coming down with like probably 13, 14 laps to go here now. It's time to get up on the wheel. Bill Elliott sitting back there. He needs to race his way up in here. It's time to start pushing and shoving. So I think you might have to say the price of poker is getting ready to go up. For those who are not yet in the Daytona 500, the time, the opportunity is beginning to run out. We've had five different leaders in the race thus far, five lead changes and five cautions. And how about Jeff Burton, who won the poll for the 2006 Daytona 500 came down here this year, qualified so badly, and yet the car has run like Jack the Bear on the racetrack. But he said all along when I talked to him about this, last year they brought a car to sit on the pole, and they did exactly that. This year they brought a car back that they could win this race with, and I think he's starting to prove that their theory, and at least their philosophy, is paying off. Drafting the pace car as we get ready for the restart. Let's go back hey, upstairs. You know how I know Despain is old? Jack the Bear. I hadn't heard that in 30 years. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack the Bear next thing, he's, next thing he's going to say is it's going to be too wet to race or the Bear's going to get you or whatever the I rest of that, that is. I got that from you, DW. I got that from you. Running right. like Jack the Bear. If Jeff Burton wins this race, he'll start on the second row of the Daytona 500, Matt. And a lot of conversation on the radio. Scott Miller's crew chief actually thought more guys would stay out. The conversation under the yellow, his teammate right behind, they're concerned about the orange car, the 20 of Tony Stewart, waiting a lap, then working his way around Boyer. Burton simply said on the radio, just tell Clint to run his own race. I'll run mine. Just do what he has to do, and I'll do the same. We'll work together if we can, but you never know in this type of stuff. Well, there's there's that, a two-car streamliner right behind them, and it's Tony Stewart and Dale Jr. When they hook up, watch out. But that's the voice of experience from Burton. Don't try to help me. We'll probably end up hurting each other. Let's uh, work together best we can, then you go your way, I'll go mine. Eleven laps to go as we're back under green. Can James Hilton hold on to a qualified spot ahead of Johnny Sauter? Michael Walter, Boris Set, and Mike Bliss. Let's find out. Well, we know he has the equipment. That's a good race car. That's a Richard Childress race car. He and Sauter drafting together right side of your screen. Bring her down, Jay. Bring her down. Stuck up to the level. Richard Childress car with a Richard Childress That's engine. Stuck up to the level, sir. I'm sure James would say back, would if I could. Well, he can. He's doing it. I don't think there's any question about the car. He's very capable of doing that. Hilton was runner-up for what is now the Nextel Cup in 1967 and 1971. In 65, he was the champion crew chief for Ned Jarrett. And you can see the car is handling very well. He's got help from behind. And they're pretty much in the catbird seat right now. The conclusion is follow the level track, follow the level track. And, of course, Johnny Sauter in the 70 car, he is right behind him. He would get in as far as racing his way in, but he's in the show no matter what because he was one of those fastest three cars of the go or go home. Hold her down and follow the 11. Hold her down and follow the 11. This would be one of the most incredible upsets in Daytona 500 history if James Harvey Hilton, age 72, could make this race. Speaking of a race, we got a race for the lead. Tony Stewart, that 20 car. That was Burton's biggest fear. Oh, we got trouble going into three, guys. Got an engine blowing. Reed, Reed Sorensen. Caution is out. Yeah, that's Hold your line. Big got time one, Two more coming. 36 is the last one. Now, when Double caution inside, comes inside, out. Inside. All right, you're going to take that right to the garage. The field freezes based on the last of many scoring loops Woo! around this racetrack that the cars pass Reed, over. Not that car. So the field is frozen at the moment those caution lights come on 
drivers cannot advance their position. Let's update one other thing about James Hilton in the 58 car, Mike. Remember, it was not that many laps ago. He was a lap down. He was penalized a lap for overshooting his pits. He got the free pass, and here he is up there running in the top ten. And right now, he's about eight and a half laps away, if he can stay where he's at, of making the 49th annual Daytona 500. And these little short runs are really good for James, I'm yes. telling you. <laughs> He has two wins in Nextel Cup, Richmond in 1970, Talladega in 1972. Four <laughs> poles and his own banner toe playing Go James over the Go. speedway. Well, we saw Kurt Shammerdine, you know, in one of Childress's cars, do the same thing, race his way into the 500, and here sits my old buddy. <laughs> you know, Richard Childress, since he got out of the driver's seat, not only has he made a lot of drivers famous, as uh, here's Hilton, his first race won $100. And that was driving for Ned Jarrett, actually. Hey, yes. I told the story on one of our practice shows. He got in the car to get starting money. And because Ned thought, because it was a road course, he might just keep racing around, they towed the cars on an open trailer then, put a locking gas cap on Hilton's car, and the key was in Ned's pocket. So when he came in for fuel, he couldn't get it. He had to park <laughs> the car. He knew James would run all day if he could. But, you know, I spent a little bit of time talking to James Hilton down here at the test in January. And, you know, you could see the grin behind his full-face helmet. It's like he told me, he said, Larry, I know it's a long shot making the Daytona 500, but you know what? I'm having fun, and I'm enjoying myself. There's a uh, Hilton's pit. I don't care how many Rocky movies they make. They're going to have to get up to about Rocky 88 to tell the story of James Hilton. This is fantastic. Who would have thunk it? So Hilton right now, the first of the transfer spot, Sauter second, and the man who's trying to break that up is Michael Waltrip. Krista is in his pit. Yeah, guys, a lot of tension down here. You know, Michael Waltrip had kind of worked with a Reed Sorensen there. They were lined up to work together in the draft. So when Reed's engine blew, a little bit of a scary moment. But if you're taking a look at the monitor here, you can see a lot of talk about the star cars. You see all the names in yellow there. Those are the guys who have to race in. That is what the 55 crew is monitoring. You can see Michael Waltrip with Boris said behind him. Now, Boris is already in. But then look at after Biffle. Look at that plump right there. Mike Bliss, Dale Jarrett, Ward Burton, Kenny Wallace. Those are the guys Michael Waltrip is concerned with, as well as... James Hilton and Johnny Sauter in front of him. All the talk down here, guys, the star cars. remember that car. They want to be stars on Sunday. They don't want those lights to go out Thursday night. Hey, Larry, I bet old James Hilton saying, man, it's the longest Daytona 500 I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> James Hilton's last 500 was 1983. The most recent cup race, 1993 at Darlington. the Fox ticker, the two green position cars. Right now, James Hilton and Johnny Sauter, you'll see their names in green. They are in the Daytona 500 based on where they are right now. Drivers in blue, we know they'll be there based on speed or provisional. And the drivers whose names are in yellow have some work to do in these final six laps. James Harvey got him a good restart there. Keeping up. Sauter's looking underneath him going into one here. That could be bad news for James. Yeah, because Johnny has friends with him. You see Jimmy Johnson, the 48, Schrader in the 21, the whole group there. Yeah, kicking yeah. him to the high side. He's There's the race down. right there. That's the race right there for the transfer. Michael Walter moves into second transfer spot ahead of Boris Said. Yeah, once James got up out of the draft, uh, he's pretty well done. And James Hilton was almost in. How much fun did you have out there, fella? That, uh, I can't even remember the last time I had that, but I don't think anybody deserves that much fun. Not <laughs> even me. Are you surprised that you ran that well? Uh, yeah, really. But, you know, to been away. The biggest thing, I hadn't run with these guys. Not so much about the track or the car, but just that when you're running against this whole breed of uh, superstars, you, you're not familiar with them, and you don't want to do anything to you get them out of shape. But uh, they were all real good to me, every one of them, and uh, I can't say enough about it. Well, you had all the folks in the rocking chairs going a mile a minute cheered for you, my friend. Everybody in America was cheered for you, for sure. Well, I hope I didn't let them down. I did the best we could, and uh, we'll get them next time. Attaboy. Steve?